Hello, I am Bishop Kevin Sweeney of the Diocese of Patterson, New Jersey. Thank you for joining us for a special simul podcast edition of the Beyond the Beacon and Coffee with Cupkey. If it was Coffee for Cupkey, I'd be filling in for Father Paul Manning. Uh, but uh, as host of the Beyond the Beacon, I'm glad to welcome Monsignor Cupkey, uh, our, our diocesan archivist, his, our diocesan historian, and pastor of St. Anthony's in Hawthorne. Uh, I'm supposed to say Pastor of St. Anthony's first, right? But uh, sure. I'm very sorry about that. And uh, as long as you say Hawthorne, <laughs> St. Anthony's in Hawthorne, and uh, Professor of Church History at uh, the seminary yes. and Seton Hall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so for those who might listen to the Beyond the Beacon audio, we might encourage you to uh, check this one out on YouTube as we're going to take a little tour through our DAS and archives. My first time in <laughs> four years. Um, I've heard it was here. I've heard about it. I've been meaning to get here. But now, thanks to the podcast, Jay and Cecile are here with us. And Monsignor Kupke, uh, you and I together can learn a little from Monsignor Kupke about our DAS and archives. Monsignor, thanks for being here. Bishop, welcome to the archives. This you're, is not your first time here. <laughs> no, but you're only the second bishop to ever get down is here. Is that right? So, yes. Wow, that makes me feel a little better. <clears throat> uh, do you remember your first time? I should have asked you this before, but uh, your first, were seminarian or? Uh, no, I was, I, I was a young priest. This is the fourth place we've had the archives. Okay. We've moved them several times. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I go, <clears throat> I go back to uh, 1976 because that year was the bicentennial oh, yes. of the country. And the American bishops decided as a group at their meeting that as their contribution to the bicentennial, they would all appoint an historical archivist. Oh, wow. <clears throat> and then later that year, they had a, 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 a meeting for us, a, a training at the University of Dayton. Oh, sure. So Bishop Casey called me in and said, uh, you're it. How many years were you ordained at that point? Three. And you had studied some church history in seminary? My best friend was Monsignor Rodimer's parochial vicar. So he knew through Dennis that <laughs> I liked history. So yeah, it all worked history, out. history, as we say. It's who uh, you know. And we'll say a prayer, <clears throat> but just before that on the topic. Um, so the bishops of the United States in 1976 right. say that every diocese that should have an They would, all appoint, they right? would all appoint. <clears throat> so that wasn't something standard. Um, hit and miss? Technically, the chancellor of the diocese was the archivist. Okay. <clears throat> But it was never seen as an historical or research. But yet, um, <clears throat> I'm thinking of um, the Office of Readings uh, that we read in the breviary, um, these letters from even Polycarp from early on in the church. It seems like the church has had yes, a custom so always of maintaining, yeah, right? Yeah, right um, yeah, and that's just yeah. something that maybe happened naturally? Yeah, yeah but um, in, the, in the United States, it was <clears throat> much more, there was nobody full time doing this. Right. And. Um, the only ones who had really looked at it historically are the few dioceses back then that had had a canonization course, okay. like Baltimore right, and, and Los right, Angeles. Right, but right, right. Um, well, let's say a prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us <coughs> through the archives and uh, maybe working through us uh, can uh, uh, spark the interest of our listeners and, um, and viewers uh, so that um, I, I feel that um, seeing where we come from as the church and how we got here and who's helped us to get here uh, can inspire our own faith to um, follow the good example of many uh, whose lives are recorded here, right? Yes. Uh, so uh, we'll <coughs> place ourselves in God's presence in the name of the Father and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be recreated and thou shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, Grant us in that same spirit to be truly wise and always rejoice in your consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lady Seat of Wisdom. Pray for us. Saint Jerome. Pray for us. All holy men and women. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So Saint Jerome, the patron saint of archivists. Patron saint of archivists. Translated yes. the Bible into Latin, right? Into Latin, okay. right. And the, was a bit the, of a character. Uh, very much a character, <laughs> right. Um, also, as uh, you know, one of the first ones to uh, promote tourism in the Holy Land. You know, is that right? Eventually, well, he got there and ran a hostel for pilgrims. And and we're um, <coughs> we're recording on the Feast of the Transfiguration, yeah. and you know, just again the importance of memory. Um, the apostles remember that moment, and it's right. been recorded in you know through art, and uh, and so um, I guess also as 
we say our faith is incarnational, right? That, yes. Um, yes. And the beauty of our churches in, um, and in written documents and in records, right? In pictures. And in records, uh, so, right. right. Um, you this is very much the record of the faith of the Catholics of Northwest New Jersey for 200, 250 years. Even going back before the yes. diocese was founded in, in Way before the diocese, yeah. As um, fans of Coffee <coughs> with Kupke or those who are <laughs> able to have a, a, a copy of your book, uh, Living Stones, um, uh, y y that you took that journey, right? Um, I did. Uh, do you remember when you were asked to first write the book? Bishop Rodimer talked to me in 84, because 83, 84. 87 would be the 87 50th anniversary. Would be, yeah, right, right, yeah. right. And, uh, so, he sent me to Washington to get a master's degree in church history because he wanted a book. And, and he got it. <coughs> and he got it. <laughs> he did a great job. It was, I've shared before, it was a great benefit to me. You sent it to me in Brooklyn when I, before right, I came right. and I was reading it on retreat and in the days leading <laughs> up and uh, it was a great introduction. So right. now um, this is, I'm sure a lot of Living Stones came from here. A lot here, of Living right? Stones materials is in here. So yeah. we're going to take a look over here. I was asking about this um, photo That is here. our fourth bishop, Bishop Nava. And that's him in Rome at the council. You can see St. Peter's. I'm going to see if Cecile can get the picture here. In the background. Oh, yes, I noticed that, right. The, the, the dome. beautiful basilica, right. So this is uh, his secretary, Monsignor Rodimer. Okay, <laughs> right. And this is Father Dave Mann from Mountain Lakes, who I've was heard studying the name. there. And Monsignor Kenny Lash. God bless him. He's still right. going strong. And this is a Greek Melkite seminarian who happened to be from Patterson at the time. And seminarians were Monsignorial staff at North American Greek, College. North American College, right, right. right. Yeah. Uh, so maybe if we pan this way to the right a little bit, we have Of course, some... Bishop Nava died at the oh, council. Oh, that's right, that's right. So, so um, And he was how long as bishop? Two and a half years. Two and a half years, like that. He went, uh, but he did have some health issues. He did, issues, he right, did, right, yeah. Right, right. Uh, he's the reason, as soon as he came, uh, the area next to your office on Durham Avenue. Oh, yes. He turned that into a bedroom. Oh, office right, yes. I heard that story on so Coffee he wouldn't, with Cuppy. Uh, yes, right. They have, have to go up the stairs. stairs. Right, right. right. Um, so. Uh, this is the official Roman document to the people of the three counties of North Jersey announcing to them that they were now a diocese. Okay. Right? Um, in. Was that uh, in December of um, even 37? December of 37. Oh, December of 37. And I was going to see, we have, this is a surprise here. I didn't open it beforehand. These but, oh, are. Oh, yes, beautiful. Yes. And what these oh, the, are. Uh, paperweights. Paperweights, but this is the marble flooring from the cathedral. Oh, my goodness. So most of this we were ordained on. Oh, wow. Um, um, uh, when there's a, because the cathedral there's a vocation was, video where a guy from New York says, when your nose hits the marble, right? Yes, because yes, I, I saw that. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, um, they were renovating the cathedral. We have some pictures of that uh, that year. So, you know, we're cutting up the uh, old flooring of the cathedral, they turned it into paperweight souvenirs. Speaking the, the truth in love. Right. This is the Patterson 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary. Right. Eight, right. 1987. Wow. wow, beautiful. These two busts, That must have been an exciting time for um, uh, Bishop Rodimer, right? Um, it was. Yeah. To it was. celebrate the 50th. He had been grown up in the diocese, ordained as priest for Whole the diocese. Whole life, yeah. Right. I once, we once sat down <clears throat> and figured out that at that point, there were only like five priests of the diocese that he had never met. Is that right? <clears throat> wow. Because... Wow. Um, you know, he, he went back to when he was a sophomore in high school, when he signed up, and then <clears throat> his whole life had been in the diocese. He had never been anywhere else. So. And then he becomes bishop in 78, right? right. And, uh, and, and also, before that, 25 years working in the chancery. Oh, that's right, yes, yes. So yes. he, he knew everybody. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he um, knew everybody, uh, every, I once, spoke to him at Pat Rice's funeral. You would not have I've heard the Pat name, Rice. yeah. So he was in a wheelchair by that point, and I leaned over to him, and you know, uh, the day before, we had an inquiry here from the children of one of our ex-priests wow. from the 1950s, wow. looking to see if we had any documentation about their marriage or anything. And I, I just leaned over to Redimer and I, I mentioned the name. I said, you'll never guess who we got contacted by yesterday. And I said the name, and immediately he told, you know, this was like a 1956 story. And I'm talking to him in 2016. Oh, my goodness. And he just repeated the whole story and details about it I'd never heard of wow. before. Wow, the guy's um, 
discerning that he maybe wasn't called to priesthood, right, and having to leave. And he fell in love with a girl next door to the rectory. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he discerned. Right, right, right. Uh, there, but for the grace of God, right? Yeah, we, we there, exactly. The grace, right? Exactly. So I was but saying, uh, go ahead. Verdimer, remember the whole thing in great detail. And here's uh, some relics from the 80s, I guess, right? <laughs> Gene Romano's uh, Bethlehem Center. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right, that's right. Yeah. And some CDs. And then what would be some of these records here? Is that um, These would be mostly... Um, Boxes of, of uh, diocesan directories. And this was a very popular and still is missed by some, right? The, uh, yes. The, the Catholic, Catholic Oh, no, the Catholic Historical View. I was thinking of the, uh, the diocesan directory with the oh, book. Oh, those with are the up there. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> those are up those. there. Um, and I have a little um, free they, advertising for St. Joseph's Health here, my coffee mug, but <laughs> I should have a coffee with cupcake. They tell me that um, if you have a copy of the diocesan directory, you don't get rid of it. You like I've heard that, yes. Hide right, it from everybody. Right, right. Um, so we're going to take a stroll, I guess, and maybe uh, look at some of the um, uh, other parts of the... Do you want to... Uh, no, I want to show you something first. <laughs> Can we go, Jay? Is that um, okay? Because you might want to take this with you. This is your throne. Is that right? This is your portable throne. Oh, boy. Which has not been out of here since the 50s, but... They used to cart this around. Oh. And erect. This is, this is the platform. This is the baldacchino over oh it. Oh, my goodness. And then over there, we have the legs, and we have different colored liturgical draperies that go on it. Is there an actual chair? There's oh, a chair. There here we go. Who's our helper here? This is uh, Stephen Anthony's Raymond. Hawthorne, right? Right. Wow. But this is the only picture we have of it actually in use. You can see a, oh, look how at it's that. set up. An outdoor con This is uh, Hinchcliffe Stadium. Oh, wow. This was a, a diocesan youth rally. Oh, diocesan youth rally. Beautiful. That, we, that might happen again, right? The newly renovated Hinchcliffe well, Stadium. That's, we that's why we're showing it to you. You may want us <laughs> to drag it out again. Who, which bishop? He's smiling. That's McNulty. McNulty, wow. Yeah. What year, approximately? This will be uh, late 50s. Wow, wow. And uh, the... Um, Mis that's McLaughlin's. Misericordia Veritas. Yeah, uh, that's McLaughlin's coat of, coat of oh, arms. Beautiful, beautiful. The Red Hand of Ulster. Oh, we, uh, um, the Irish part, I hope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Uh, so there was a, they brought around the Episcopal chair or throne, right, so for to call big, it, right? For big outdoor events, um, they would bring this and cart it around. I'm also glad to see, because it's uh, something that will be coming up. This was a Jubilee Cross, right? This is the Quincentennial, yes. The 500th anniversary of... Uh, Christianity in the Americas, right? right? Um, this will so be 1992. 1992, right? When Pope John Paul II went to Dominican Republic. Right, right. right. Um, so um, we'll be talking about in the coming weeks and months the Jubilee, Great Jubilee coming up of 2025, 25, right? And so right. sometimes there's a Jubilee cross. Um, right, this was in the cathedral and uh, eventually and it wound like up down many here. things, it... <laughs> um, Discalced Carmelite Monastery of the Most Blessed Virgin in Morristown. Yes, um, they get several boxes <laughs> uh, because they've been so... Prepare the way, uh, thanks to yes. the generosity of some of the right. campaigns. Um, Bailey Ellard High Ellard, School. Bailey Ellard, still beloved, and the very active uh, uh, alumni, alumni Association, yes. and yeah. now the home of uh, St. Paul's Inside the Walls. Yeah. Um, Over here we have, on this side, we have... Just one second before, is this it? Oh, no, that's, no, it looks that's, like Living Stones. But that's somebody blessed. else's book. Oh, the Dyes of Rockville Center. Yeah. <laughs> Who's a we, priest of the We Dyes. exchange he books with each other. Just uh, became the new Archbishop of Boston, right? New Bishop Archbishop of Boston. Yes, yeah, from Rockville Center, yes. Yeah. These are all the um, history books of the parishes. Okay, so right. So if... It's a custom for... Uh, at a 50, uh, we collect 50 them. Or 100, right. That, right, 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 right. We collect um, them. Our Lady Queen of Peace, Branchville, Lady Queen of Peace, Hewitt, Our Lady Queen of Peace, West Milford. Are the same thing. That's right, okay. Um, Our Lady Star of the Sea, Lake of Patcon, Our Lady of the Valley, Wayne. So, um, They're alphabetical by, by um, parish. Uh, you've never offered tours, have you? For <laughs> or do, do sometimes people come? Um, yes. Right. Occasionally people come um, doing parish research for histories of parishes. Um, I remember for th th there was a, a historian in St. Vincent Martyr in Madison, I think, who did a yes. book who was yeah. in contact with me at one point. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so that's, that would not be unusual. 
Occasionally we have um, researchers come in that do other stuff. For example, one of our um, hot button collections is the uh, Karen Quinlan case. Oh, that's right, yes. Because yes, it came yes. out of Which the Zeiss. Supreme Court, right. right, yes, right. So people doing moral theology research. Or Supreme Court. Right. <laughs> And um, occasionally we'll get somebody doing on, on urban demographics. Remember this one? Yes. Times this of St. John's. John's. Oh, this is a reverie by John Van Rensselaer. Yes, this is a, a uh, composition. That's the organ company, right? Yeah, this is right. how to play the, organ, the bell chimes of St. John's. You know? Oh, wow. Beautiful. So, yeah, we have, we have all kinds of stuff. And, um, down here at these, this is a newer file. This is all the immigration files of our former oh. foreign, foreign born priests. Right, right, right. Um, um, that gets more challenging as we go along. It but, uh, does. That's why we have a good immigration attorney at the moment, so we're grateful right. for that. And yes. the seminarian files. Oh, yeah. You know, in the, in the old days, the seminarian files were like one sheet of paper. <laughs> And just went in the priest file, but now no, it's a little bit more. That it's we a little bit more. Keep a record of yes, yes. And uh, then down here are the priest files. Going back, I guess to going uh, back to thirty-seven. To thirty-seven, and here he is again, Father Gene Romano. I don't know if they can see. I'm going to go closer so you can see that the founder of Bethlehem Hermitage, right, which is is a unique spot Chester. Um, in uh, in. In the Universal Church, I even think, right? Because right. Um, one of the few we'll, hermitages. We'll do a story on that. Yeah. Uh, one of the, a, dias, a, di, a diocesan hermitage, right? right. Oh, so and, the, um, their cards are waiting for their files um, to come down. Father John Connolly. Uh, I remember Father Connolly speaking of um, working in the chancery as a seminarian. Yes. Do you remember him right. telling those yes, stories? Yes, yes. That was um, back on Grassy Street. That's right. Okay, right, right, right. right. Where the um, school is now. Right, and so maybe we should, we didn't say it at the beginning, uh, we're uh, here in our Dawson Center in um, uh, 775 Valley Road. Uh, the smaller building is 777 Valley Road, which is the... Uh, the old address, convent. Yeah. Right, the old convent and the, the address of our Dawson Center. But um, this was which high school? This was Paul VI. Paul VI high, high school. And then John Paul II Elementary, elementary school. school. Right, um, right. Uh, and then after that closed, when, when did the Austin offices move here? They moved into the convents in the, uh, just at the time that Bishop Redimer became bishop. While the school was still open, huh? Right, right because right. there were no more nuns in right, the school. Right, right. And the move was from Patterson, Degrassi from Street? From Patterson, from Degrassi Street, right next to the cathedral. Right, which uh, that building came down, right? Uh, and yes. now there's the place of the charter school. Well, that, the that building had been Dean McNulty's stable originally. Is that right? For horses, and yeah. then became um, a laboratory for the Cathedral High School. Oh, then it wow. became the Diocesan Chancery Office. And now there's a new building now it's um, down. with the charter school <clears throat> in it. So right. uh, history uh, is it's living history, right? Right. <laughs> um, um, so um, <coughs> uh, here in the basement, um, what year were you ordained again? <coughs> Take Seventy-three. Seventy-three. Um, so. Um, do you remember the, the move of the archives at that time? Oh, yeah. I did it. Really? Wow. Yeah. Um, and you've been, I mean, that was 78, 79, I guess, right? 78, we moved here, yeah. Right. Uh, and Actually, um, we moved to the other building. 777. Then we moved to the Patterson Catholic Convent. Oh, wow. The archives. Right. And wow. then we moved here. Wow. Um, you could have saved the trip if you just went from <laughs> But we don't. We try to plan as we go, and we don't always know. Can't read the future. <coughs> so, uh. <coughs> Bishop Erdimer said to me, that convent will be big enough you know, to house all the diocesan and offices for the foreseeable future. I was out of there in three years because they needed more room. We're seven, where we are now, right? Yeah, yeah right, right. Um, so um, Basically, I was where the mail room is now. So the diocese was founded in December of 37, but it didn't actually operate until April of 38. Okay. Took them a few months to get... Under the first bishop? Um, bishop uh, McLaughlin. McLaughlin, right. right. So in April of 38, a truck came up from Newark, from Mount Carmel Guild, with all the files, the deeds... 
for the parishes. Parishes that had been determined. Do you remember how many parishes? There were about 40 at that about point. About 40, right, right. Now and lots, lots of little missions. Right, right. And they were all wrapped in a uh, clothesline rope. Okay. And they just pulled them out and put them on the, f on the front step. At, and, um, at, at the cathedral. At uh, Degrassi? Durham Avenue, at Degrassi Street. Degrassi Street. Right. Uh, and so you said this aisle is the heart of the right. archives. This is, is really the, the chancery office files. So starting all the way at the end, we have a few files from before the diocese, uh, from the 1930s in Newark, and then everything since, and every, every piece of paper that comes out of the chancery office, from the bishop, the vicar general, this is all here. Now that reminds me of two things from Coffee at Cupkey. One is um, you were looking for the letter. Um, mm. Was it with Bailey the Ellen? Bailey Ellen's letter. Vera, M M Vera, uh, Vera Mullane. Mullane, right, right, right. Eventually you found the letter, or she Eventually found it. Did. Right. No, right. I did. Was it down here? It's down. It was okay. right over there. Okay. And then the second thing is um, how all this is going to change because so little is on paper anymore, right? Right. Uh, so... I guess archive, archivists across the country are thinking about that, right? Yeah. And how is that going to be saved? How is it going to be made available for research? And it, in some ways, it's going to make writing history a little bit more difficult, right? Because people, I mean, I guess you can, but people, I think, put less in emails now than they put in letters in the past, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and, and also, for the most part, people don't keep diaries anymore. That's right, right, right. So right. a lot of that type of thing will be... Which was, it could be a treasure trove for a historian, yeah. right? Um, when I was writing Living Stones, you know, I found the later stuff harder to research than the 19th century stuff. Because there was less... There's just material, less, right. you know. And so, I, um, okay, when you were writing Living Stones in 83, 84, 85, I guess you would have spent a lot of time here. I did. Right, right, right. I spent one whole summer with Father Farmer and his people. Oh, right. And by the end of the summer, I was, you know, they, my friends were laughing at me. They said, you know, will you come out of the 18th century? <laughs> There's one piece here, let me see. Stop talking about them as if they're still alive. For him, the past is present. Ah, here he is. This Father is Ray Kupke examines the old newspaper clippings of the Dawson archives. In 76. 1976. This, this is what it looked like when I got took it over. Here we are 48 years later. <laughs> it's still going. That's great. That wasn't even planned. Oh, and this is, um, I think, an interesting, uh, because if you, not many people have the chance to visit a seminary. No. But if you visit a seminary, often on the walls, you'll see um, an ordination class. Look at the size of that class in 1941. St. Yeah, Mary's Seminary, Mary's. I guess that was in Baltimore, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and, might as well do one more here. To Ed and Peggy. Hmm. God knows who that is. <laughs> Sometimes we'll we collect things. Right, right. So, I think we're going to head to the other side now and... Uh, yeah. For example, we have a whole collection over here, which we really have no right to, but we have it anyway, because Bishop McLaughlin, the first Bishop of Patterson, was the uh, executor of the will of the fourth Bishop of Newark, oh. Bishop O'Connor. Wow. So we have all of O'Connor's seminary notes, his classroom teaching notes, wow. his early homilies, uh, we have a whole collection of stuff basically about Seton Hall and ICS from the 1880s and 1890s based on the fact that McLaughlin was the executor. And if somebody from the seminary or Newark wants to come and we'll, we'll right. gladly allow them to. Right, exactly. To right, right. Except uh, I don't think they know we had it until just now. <laughs> well, <laughs> we can always learn something new. This is a piece of... That's a piece of... Let me get the picture. And, This is what the cathedral looked like before the Redimer renovation. Wow. And this was a common <coughs> feature. Uh, one of the, the kind of spires in the back of the altar, right? That's one of them. Right, right, right. All right, so if, if you go in the Lady Chapel of the cathedral today. Oh, yes, that's right. The centerpiece of the 
tabernacle right, right. is one is right, this right, right here. Right, right, right. So we saved one of the the legend is that they were supposed to be uh, marble. I've never been able to authenticate wood, this right? and wood. that the ship coming over sunk. Oh, I heard right. So they reproduced the whole thing in wood. Wow. But this was, this was so big that there was actually a passageway through it. Oh, wow. To get from this side to this side. Right, right. That, that was, um, there were a few ch churches that looked like that in Brooklyn and Queens when yeah, I was growing up. Enormous, yes. right, yeah, enormous. Right. Yeah. Um, over this here, is one of our complaints about the new Baldacchino in oh, the yes. cathedral. Because it hides the St. John the Baptist window. We're going to show here the St. John the Baptist window here. Um, and now the baldacchino over the altar uh, makes it a little difficult to see that window. But um, if you, it, it invites you to it take is a what walk it is. Uh, towards the back. And, uh, uh, do you think this is a bishop's uh, traveling case here? Or? That is the World War II masket. Oh, my goodness. Of uh, Monsignor James Doyle. Wow. Who was a pastor in Netcong uh, in later years. But he was a Navy chaplain wow. during the war. And over in the corner over there, we have Bishop Nava's masket that he used as a missionary in southwest New York. Oh, boy. And when he was a priest in the Buffalo wow. Diocese. Wow. I think my, this was what we were talking about before, yes. right? These are the treasured, uh, uh, the treasured directories. Diocese that, director. uh, right, right. The oldest ones are up there. Oh, I see them out. Yeah, in the right, corner. Right, right, yeah, right, right. That, that will be the originals. Right. So this is this is what it looked like, and then I don't know if you've ever seen this. This is the Rodimer renovation. Oh yes, um, a lot of wood. <laughs> yes, um, and the sense of the Second Vatican Council and the liturgical reform. Right. The altar coming a little closer to the people. Right. Um, right. Um, Right, and I'll bring in the, the music. Bishop, right, in the central place, yeah. And Bishop Sartre um, would put the music right back in the fire loft. That's right, yes, yes, yes. The cross is still there as it was, right? right. And the window. Um, the cross is, um, is very historic. That was the mission cross of the cathedral, right? The custom in the 19th century was to have an annual parish mission. Oh, yes. And you would, on the bottom of the cross, you would carve the year that they, they would bring the cross right. from Paris, Paris. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the mission cross of the cathedral parish. This used to be in the back of the cathedral wow. uh, where the confessionals are now. And when it was a mission cross, it didn't have our Blessed Mother and St. No, John there. No, no, those right? were, uh, they were all reconstructed. Um, but it's so beautiful. Um, yeah. Uh, this is making me think we can have a follow-up episode. Maybe my Father Manning and Monsignor Gino could join us and we can go to the cathedral and, uh, and see some of the history there. And this... The throne, right? The fabric is supposed to be one of the last silk mills in the city. Oh, it's you know, the, silk or the city, last. Right, um, right, right, right. So, right. Yeah. And then, of course, you know what it looks like today. Right. But this is what it looked like when it was under construction. A sketch, huh? That's before the tower. So this would be in the 1880s. Oh, oh I see that. The, you, the, the tower. The steeple is gone, right, and also right, the right. the front minarets are not there yet. It's a whole different view. This of was it. in the course of construction. Yeah. Okay. And this one is before sound systems. So this is what the pulpit used to look like with the sound shell. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Um. The Holy Spirit as often is there, right? Um, <coughs> right. Uh, and so the preacher is here. So this would help to and project. And the voice goes up and out, right? Yeah. yeah right, yeah. right, right. Is that, that's not, is that the same pulpit? No. Right. This is right. now, this is the Hinchcliffe pulpit. This is the famous pulpit that moved back and forth because B Dean McNulty, when he built the cathedral, put this on the wrong side. Okay. And people always accused him of putting it there because he, he expected to be a throne. A cathedral. Ah, right, 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 right. So his successor then moved it. And then to three the years side. later, it did become because a cathedral. It moved be, back right, again. Because it became a cathedral. This is now, though, the base of where the oils are in the back of the cathedral. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Um, and when you say the Hinchcliffe pulpit, uh, 
Was the Hinchcliffe family donated. Okay, okay. Um, this going back, this is a wonderful old photo, but this is the St. John's convent being moved across the street. On, on wheels? Oh, yeah. On, on they moved the whole building on wheels? Wow. This is, this, is, uh, this is one of the buildings that Gino took down to build his... <laughs> right. But originally it had been across the street where the uh, police department is. And when Patterson decided to build a high school on that site, this was moved across the street right behind Lock, the stock, and barrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, you wouldn't even think of doing this today, but they were able to do it. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about this, Monsignor. This was done by a very young artist at the time, Steve Coleman. He's a parishioner at Blessed Kateri in Sparta. Oh, yes. And uh, now teaches art in the Frankfurt Township school system. Wow. And he's a, he was a good friend of Father Paul and I. So when we moved down here, I asked him to do what would have been a Paschal Candle centerpiece for the ah, year yes. that the diocese right, was founded. Right, right. And of course the, Yesterday the wording. Today, yes, yes, the words that we say is we light the candle. Right, light exactly, candle. Right, right, exactly. Right. Um, beautiful. Um, yeah. Living history. Yes. <laughs> now, he has, now he has three sons. The oldest one is in college. So, But he was a young, a young guy back then. He made his mark here. He in made his archives. mark here in the <laughs> archives. Thanks. This is one of our oldest books in the, in the archives. Uh, we don't ordinarily have sacramental registers down here. But this is a, a book when Booten and St. Mary's Dover were a joint mission. And this is their baptismal marriage book from the 1840s and 50s. Just hold it up so people can see what it well, looks like. Well, it's in pieces, right. so you go. Um, it's a real relic, I guess, right? But yeah. This was um, in the 1850s? 1840s and 50s, 50s so well. you can... And you said this priest said, oh, I see what you mean, bad handwriting. 1849. So you can, this one's... Mm. This one's uh, handwriting is relatively good. You can see October 1849, yeah. Yeah, but then it gets worse as you go on. And, and so it was um, a combined mission, two sites? Um, right, two sites together, right. And <clears throat> um, they were spun off of, you know, everything in Morris County and Sussex County, uh, with the exception of Butler, comes from St. Vincent's and Madison. Okay. They were the original. Right. So Booten and Dover, and when would St. Vincent's and Madison have started as a parish? Well, they started having a priest come over from New York for Mass as early as 1805. 1805, wow. And by 1825, they built a small church. In 1839, they built another one, which is still standing as a private residence oh, today. Oh, right, right, right. And then later on, at the end of the century, they built the current okay, church. right. <clears throat> so, and then um, there would have been communities in the uh, vicinity. They had, they had mass stations from Madison all the way up to Montague and Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. And they wouldn't necessarily have a church. They would just find no, a place no, where they nor could. Nor would they have right. mass every right, week. Yeah, right. Right. But very quickly, the two largest uh, were St. Mary's Dover and Mount Carmel Booton. So by the late 1840s, they would have mass every other Sunday and the other places would have one during the week. So they were, they were set off as a separate entity then early and in the game. As we said at the beginning of the episode, um, for the church, um, almost it seems from the beginning, record keeping was, was important. I, I think of where my parents are from in Ireland, um, yeah. you know, people will go back and find baptismal records from yes. centuries, yeah. right? Over the centuries. Right. Uh, so, so now uh, we have people coming here looking for the same thing. And in the 1800, early 1800s... Uh, and sometimes and we're able to help them. That's great, know. that's great. If you can decipher the handwriting. <laughs> Some of them are, are a little, you know, my, my great-great-grandfather was baptized in New Jersey sometime in the 1800s. Can you give me a... Oh, yeah, you know, right, right. That's a little right, bit right, right. extreme. But right. But if they have where the person lived, then... If they got might, a town, we can right, find right, usually right, a record. Right, right. Um, well, we have some other items here. Um, um, this, this book is, do you want to put this back on there? Yeah. Or? 
Got to be very careful with this, right? Um, yes, that one on the top. Okay. And this one on the bottom. Good. So this catches my attention. This would be on a... That uh, is um, from Monsignor Brestles. What do they call it? A, a flash drive now, right? But, uh, um, Monsignor Brestles, you want to read what it says there? It's his 45th anniversary as a priest and his 70th birthday. So Brestle, by this June point... June 17, 1984. Uh, Mayfair Farms. Which is in uh, West Orange. It's closed okay. now. A oh, catering hall, right? Very popular day. in its time. Yes. So Brestle was vicar general by this point. But he was also... Did he live at St. Anthony's in Hawthorne? He was pastor right. there at one point. Right. And he was also the first priest ordained for the diocese. Who would that be? Do you know? Is that, that is Mike Hart, the rector of the cathedral. Um, he looks a little like Monsignor Hart. No relation? No connection. Right, right. And here right. you have uh, Bishop Rodimer. Right. That's John O'Hearn, who was a Franciscan and was head of the mission office. Um, this is... Are they singing a song? Maybe. No, these two were two Franciscans who had a little singing act together, okay. so they did something. Lauren Andrews was the youngest priest of the diocese at the oh, time. Wow. Another singer here with an accordion. Right. <laughs> this uh. is Patty O'Donovan. Oh my goodness, look at that. Just celebrated his 50th anniversary. Right, right. right. Another singer. And that is John O'Connell, the founder of Florham Park, Dick Messenlaner, and John Ryan, the founder of Kinelon. Oh boy. This, what this is Patty O'Donovan acting oh. as, <laughs> playing. And here's another nice hat there. This is Gene Boland. Okay. Um. It's a younger guy, right? That's John Hart. Okay. There were quite a few speeches and presentations, huh? Oh, yeah. They, it was the only priest event, basically, and his family. So we had a lot of fun with it. Okay. That's Christian Haig, his classmate. Wow. A toast. Teddy Lee. I mean, oh, the started, he's the one who started the Hispanic ministry, right? Fatima Pasek, wow, yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. Originally was, from China. <clears throat> he was from China, from the prefecture of Linsing, and he had been sent by his bishop to study in uh, Spain and was caught in Spain when the revolution happened. Wow. So uh, caught Bishop, you know, this is a complicated thing, but Bishop McNulty's brother was president of Seton Hall. Oh, yes. Seton Hall had an Asian Studies Institute. Right. So Bishop McNulty's brother had a lot of connections bringing Chinese okay. priests into... So do you know, oh, you know, that one is um, Jim O'Rourke. Oh, wow. Uh, was up in sure. Mary Hart. Mary Hart, yeah, yeah. yeah. These guys song, are I all guess. dead, yeah. yeah. That's Brestel, and that's the then president of the priest senate, Vinnie Malloy. Okay, wow. Uh, there's got some real treasures in here, huh? Oh, yeah. And yeah. then... Um, this one you might like. Um, this is Bishop Boland, the second bishop. Oh, yes. This is his desk calendar from wow. 1948. They still make they calendars still, with the same yes, cover. They were right. making them like that? <coughs> 1948, wow. <coughs> so you can see what an uncluttered schedule Bishop Boland had. Oh, yeah. A lot of days off. Yeah. <laughs> Friendly Sons of St. Patrick. Yep. <laughs> Some things have not changed. <laughs> yeah, he didn't, he, uh, well, he had some busy weeks. Wow. So someday we'll have your desk calendar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, these are all your predecessor's installation oh, wow. booklets. Most of Reverend Lawrence Casey. Ili Soli Servio. Yeah. Uh, him alone do I serve. The last, the last words of um, the Bishop of Rochester, John Fisher, before he went oh, on the scaffold. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Um, and then Bishop Casey was originally from Rochester, from Rochester New York, right? Yes. Um, uh, Thomas Aloysius Boland. The second. Um, uh, and Father Patty O'Donovan, who we just mentioned, 
yesterday sent me a picture of him and my aunt Aloysius, sister Aloysius, in oh. Galway in Ireland. So here's Thomas Aloysius Bolin. There he is, um, yes. Uh, Thomas Henry McLaughlin, McLaughlin, the McLaughlin, first bishop. Right. And here's Bishop Casey. Installation of his most uh, most Reverend Peter Garrity as the third Archbishop of Newark, Friday, June 28, 1974. Oh, this is. Oh, this is the uh, this is the installation. This one they, they would have given uh, a personal personalized yes. booklet, right, for right. the mass. Right. Oh, wow. We didn't do that with you. Was that no, that's it. <laughs> we were just we were trying flying to get by the seat of our pants. Uh, yes, exactly. With masks and spacing. Uh, and so, how about uh, this? You're saying is a this is uh, one of our collection of pontificalia. We call it right. Uh, these are and when this things were the, still in Latin. This is the book that would have been used for confirmation for the prayers. Yes. Yeah. As I said, I'm glad that some things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Right of confirmation and, and diverse, diverse blessings. blessings. Right, right. Uh, and this is Bishop can, can Navas. We open that? Yes, that's Bishop Navas' mitres. Okay. So you can see this is his gold mitre. Uh, fairly plain, right? Not too many. Yeah, um, cloth of gold. Larger than a little bit. And then underneath it is his, what they used to call the precious mitre. The precious mitre. With uh, all away, kinds yeah. of... Oh, yeah. <laughs> this has changed some nice emeralds, it looks like, in there. I, I'm not going to try it out. I don't know yeah, I, pr I presume it's all fake, right, but... Right. <laughs> um, if it were real, we wouldn't have it in here. <laughs> wow. Do you have, I guess there's uh, some similar things like this for some of the other bishops, huh? Some of them, yes. You know, not many of them, the early ones didn't die here, so they oh, right, took stuff right, with them. Right, right, right. Uh, the first three uh, left us to go elsewhere. We have a few other Oh, items we here. have. We How have about it. this book over here, your album? This one? Yeah. This is photos of... Casey's Welcome to Patterson. Okay, that was a big moment, yeah. Yes. Oh, look at nice Cadillac there. Right. This would be right by your house. Okay. Um, this is... The different schools represented? The, the mayor would meet them right where the bridge comes over. I've heard that. yes. Right. And then they would come down Broadway, and the different schools, oh, people yes, would be lined yes, up. yes, yes, yes. Kissing babies. Right. <laughs> Some things uh, have not changed. Do you remember who this the mayor Russell? was at that time? No, I don't. Oh, yeah, that I do. That's Pat Kramer. Okay, yes, I heard that. <clears throat> Welcome, Bishop Lawrence B. Casey. Right. There we go. Wow. So this Those is this is all, this is in front of the cathedral. This is his first shot, walk into the cathedral to see what he inherited. <laughs> um, those are all from the newspaper. And this is in front of your residence as wow. a children of St. Teresa's School. Oh, beautiful. Now he's vested this is, from this. this is Boland, and Boland as Metropolitan installed him. Wow. This is actually a good shot. This is your house now. Oh, wow. This is the staircase. I see this it is now. what it yes, looked like. Yes, yes, yes. This is the Board of Consultors. I was going to say, yes, right. At the right. formal meeting to uh, verify his credentials. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. You have a couple other items here. How about the picture there? Uh, this one, this is the same thing, actually. This is a broader picture of the front of the cathedral. Um, and his for, welcome. For McNulty's welcome. Oh, for McNulty. This is right. 653. 1953, well. Wow. Um, and this is the same thing. This is McNulty riding in the car. With a nice top hat. With a top hat. <laughs> we got a few other ones. Now this is 
one of our older things, you know, all of our deeds are on paper. Oh my goodness. Except St. Vincent's and Madison. You know, they would have better quality. So <laughs> this is the deed to St. Vincent's on vellum. Vellum. From the original French emigres who were the original owners oh of the property. Goodness. And turning the deed over to the parish. So 1863. You, you're right. You can see, th this is the old church. You can see the old sign there. Wow. Someone had nice handwriting here. Yes. And it's in English. Yes, and they made a mistake yeah. on it. They initially put St. Vincent's in Essex County, and oh. they had to change it to Mars, Mars County. County uh, some version of Whiteout, right? Which right, <laughs> right. Early um, Whiteout. Um, this... Indenture. Indenture, okay. Wow. Now they just email the document. James right? Roosevelt Bailey, the Bishop of oh, New York. Yeah. Beautiful. Bishop Bailey had a lot of fun with uh, deeds because he spent a lot of time trying to make sure that they would come into his possession, oh, rather. Right, right. And then one day he realized that if he was suddenly to die, all the parishes would go to his Protestant relatives because they, they were, were in, in his, his name. name. Right, right. So that's when he got the legislature to create the form that we have today. A parish corporation. Parish right? corporation. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right. These are some old St. John's athletic pictures. Oh, that's good. Never let them say we didn't have girls' athletics oh, back yeah, in the look 20s. look at that. Girls basketball, it looks like. Right. Yeah. And that is Walter Hill. Wow. Who later the became... Chaplain and coach, maybe. <laughs> right. Later became the rector of the cathedral, is Doc right? Hill. Walter Hill. And this is... This again, this is the orphanage, the parish orphanage. Wow. You know, which is, uh, again, where Father Gino took that property right. and sold it right. to. This, oh, yes. This right. was the original building on that property, St. John's St. Parish John's Orphanage. School, 1882. Yeah. Um, and then these are the boys. And the same Father Hill, right? Right. Yeah. And the coach, I think, is there, yeah? Yeah. A little bit different than the uniforms we wear today. <laughs> right. Like the knee pads. And the <laughs> yeah. Yes, right, right. Uh, well, this has been great, Monsignor. I. Uh, we have one more to show oh, yes. you before you go. Sure. And I just lost it. Oh, here it is. This is the bill for the cathedral. <laughs> the original. I think I heard it was paid off. This is the work order from Dean McNulty to the architect. It lists how many stones oh boy. were purchased, how much each stone cost, wow. uh, how they were dressed. You know. New Catholic Church, specification of the cut stone work of the New Catholic Church to be built at Patterson, New Jersey, according to the plans and sections furnished by P.C. Kiley, that the architect. Right, that's right? the architect, right. 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 He's also uh, the architect of Boston's Cathedral. Really? Providence's Cathedral. Wow. Uh, but you can see all the, the cost of every stone. The jams and arch shall be checked and chamfered with label moldings around the arch. Well, yeah, I have no idea what it all means. But all the fitting <clears throat> hinge bolts and anchors shall be required about the entire work must be done by the stone cutters, in quotes, and then to the contractors. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, and what, what year was this, do we know? This would be like 1868, 1867. Because oh, oh. um, the cathedral essentially was done by 1870. And, uh, and this was specific work, obviously, for the stonecutters, but also there was a lot of parishioners who were right. laborers <coughs> who helped in the actual right. construction these, of the cathedral. This right. is the professional contract. Right, right, they have to right, give you right, X right, number right, of dress. Right, right. They make the difference between dress stones and undress stones. And the stones came from? From uh, Little Falls. Little Falls, right, yeah, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Um, so, so we well, have lots of good stuff down yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, We'll uh, have to come back for another trip at some point or again, maybe get uh, Father Manning and uh, 
Let's do see another, Gino and yeah. uh, do a little history. Now, Gino will take all this with him. <laughs> no, no, we could go. He'll want to put it on display we'll at the cathedral. We'll leave this year. <laughs> right, right. right. Um, but thank you, Monsignor thank Kupke. You. Um, thank you for coming. Really appreciate your time and all that you do for the diocese as well. It's great to see that picture of you here in 1974. And uh, I didn't um, realize that was hanging out quite so. <laughs> or 76, right? So uh, yeah. 48 years ago. And um, uh, uh, this is uh, a treasure that we pass on, right? Uh, but it has to be cared for. So right. thank you for the wonderful care. And thanks to our helpers uh, who are there with your assistance there. That, um, Thank you. Work, so. Thank you for visiting. Um, thanks, everybody. We'll see you again on Beyond the Beacon and Coffee with Cupkey. God bless you. Mm -hmm.